Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to the video. We are going to look at Ashley Wood today. Uh, I initially was going to do a video on Dean Yeagle. I will still do the video on Dean Yeagle, um, but uh, I, I opted to do Ashley Wood today for a couple of reasons. One, we're kind of on like a gritty sort of pen and ink thing right now, and it, it seemed to fit sort of the theme that uh, was was appearing in the last couple of videos. My thumbnails too have been kind of like black and white. So I'm like, ah, you know what? This isn't all black and white art though by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it, it'll fit. So, all right, Ashley Wood. Ashley Wood is a professional comic book artist. He's an illustrator. He's a fine artist. He's a toy designer. He's he's really actually done a lot and he's he's pretty inspirational to me. Uh, he's a very fearless artist, um, and uh, all good traits. Um, if you're gonna, you know, get, you know, get into the comics game, he's he's got a good head on his shoulder. We'll we'll go kind of fast just because um, I have so much art opened. Um, so this is the Zombies versus Robots trade paperback collection, and um, well, a lot of really really great stuff in it. There's there's so much Ashley Wood books out there, and in fact, I would highly recommend um, you know going to eBay or Amazon and just grab a couple of the cheap ones. You know, if someone's got a used book that's got like a ding in it or whatever, um, they're selling it for a little bit cheaper. Pick them up. You know. His, I, I find like his books, you know, obviously they could be collectible too, but, uh, they're, they're fun books to just kind of get out and look at, you know, I feel like his, his stuff feels like it should be used, not, you know, kept in a, like, you know, museum. Uh, so, so yeah, grab, grab some of his work and study it and look at it and, um, it will benefit you. He's got great influences um early on he was heavily influenced by chris Bacalo in particular it looked to me like maybe his generation next work uh, a little bit of generation x but ash moved through that style pretty quick and then started heading kind of more towards i wouldn't say exactly what he does now but but what people are probably most familiar with which would be it's got like a little bit more of a bill sinkevich or paul pope or Bisley, I mean, Ash is his own person, Jay Lee, whatever you want to you know, lump it in with. Um, and again, I, I, to me, Ash is his own artist. It's you, when you see a piece, you know, it's Ashley Wood stuff. So those are, I'm painting in very, very broad strokes with those, um, inferences. There's a couple more that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. I'll, I'll probably remember them later, but, uh, uh, yeah, so his work became pretty influential to other artists i would say maybe back around like 12 or 13 years ago i started seeing people emulate it i think he influenced sean gordon murphy to some extent i mean you know people could debate that maybe sean gordon murphy would say it's not true but um who knows <laughs> it's my video i i think that it's possible <laughs> That's the thing. When you when you have uh, your own YouTube channel, you can control the narrative of <laughs> rewrite comic history one video at a time. Um, ah, so cool how you can see the texture of the paper on this. Really, really cool. Again, kind of going back to that fearless thing. Like if I did this piece, I, I would feel like it wasn't finished and that it needs more tightness or maybe more o opaque ink over it and he just lets it be you know he's he's that fearless with this stuff all and also it's fun that he does different he'll use different techniques for different pages and different things and he really kind of like lines up his stories to um allow that um some pretty cool metal gear solid stuff that he did um he did a book for Wildstorm. I was trying to remember the name of it. It's been just long enough that I, I can't remember the name of it, of it. If if anyone in the comments knows, can can you put the name of the Wildstorm book? I may remember it, but um, I think it was like a 12-issue series with Joe Casey. I just can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at it. Uh, and I, do I have all of his sketchbooks in here? I usually will have like... I usually have his um, 
sort of Ashley Woods, like, they're not called sketchbooks. He, has, he always gives them, like, fancy names. I don't see them in here right now. Usually I have them in my office. Yeah, I don't see them. I'm looking around to see if I can spot them. I do have some Ashley Wood in here, I'm sure. Uh, this is great. These robots are so cool. The shadows and stuff are real nice. Ooh, look at this. It's funny. It's it's been just long enough that I haven't done a video that that um, it's actually a little hard coming back to it. It's you definitely have to shift gears to put on your thinking cap. <laughs> it was because it's what what you end up refining when you do a lot of videos is is um, the names of artists and stuff like that. Because I I like you know a thousand different artists if not more probably, and so. Um, there's a concept artist that I, I've done a video on. He's really, really good. Um, I can't think of his name now. Um, it's pretty dark art, but he, he did some video game design stuff for um, a game. And, uh, oh, man. Sometimes Ashley's painted work will remind me a little bit of it. This is cool. There, and um, at times, and it, it was funny as uh, I had I'd shot about fifteen minutes of this video before, like I said, my computer had shut off on me and I lost it. Um, but uh, uh, at times, and I I don't know if David Cho is an influence on Ashley's stuff, but but they do have some similarities in in a little bit of their work, like the letterings, the the spontaneous like brush strokes and stuff like that. But both guys are extremely fearless with their work, which is something that I I kind of gravitated towards with both of them. Uh David Cho came to Wildstorm probably in like the late 90s or early 2000s and was friends with Jim, and we all went to lunch and uh I was really, really um, enamored by David just as a person, but also as an artist. And, and um, it made a big impact on me. For the next few years, I really was like, I need to have that that attitude of just like, fuck it, I'm going to do whatever I want and just own it. And Ash kind of has that too. He doesn't really give a shit if people like his work or not. He's going to do whatever the hell he wants and just make it what he thinks is cool and he's able to stand behind it and own it and it's, it's a powerful place to be with your art because uh you know not everyone's gonna get it the the inking on this is great so he uses pilot pens for some of his pen and ink work and pilot pen can get these nice thin lines like this but it can also like do a chisel tip so when you see these kind of thick sort of chunky lines and then this, that's what he's using. It's really, really beautiful. And then this, this is probably more like brush or it could even be like Prisma colored, uh, like a China marker. I, I don't think it is. Uh, and then he hits it with a little splatter, but really, really beautiful calligraphy. Has a little bit of a Ralph Steadman vibe at times. This is nice. He's He's got some Phil Hale in his work. Uh, I know that Ash is a big Phil Hale fan. meets <laughs> this is cool it is great he it has his it almost has a little bit of a um oh is it robert williams who's the illustrator it's not Robert Fawcett. I think that's an actor. I think it's Robert Williams. Um, but sometimes his his girl's legs and shoes and stuff like that remind me of of his work. I'm telling you, man, I'm rusty. I haven't done YouTube in like four months. Well, I've done two short videos, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to re reboot my thing because that's the that's the thing is like the the last like five months or as long as i haven't been doing videos i really haven't been looking at art or or really anything um i've just been working and then i normally for me like i do music 
music documentaries, guitar reviews, that kind of stuff. Like that's my background when I'm working. I, I don't really listen to comic podcasts or anything like that. So, uh, you pay the price when you do that. <laughs> But if you want to talk to me about guitars, let's go. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Man, those guns are great. I like how he just he lays like the screen tone down. It's just like he's it's like fuck it, I'm just gonna put it down. He isn't like cut it all perfectly and stuff. It's so cool. So fearless. Oh man, I love this page. crazy look at all the white paint he didn't like whatever he put down didn't matter he's whited it out the paper color is really wild too i don't know if he used like an old sheet of paper or threw like some sort of a wash on it before he started i don't know whatever he did it looks cool as hell and then is this oh i think this is did i don't know it's hard to tell i'm, I'm talking about the white yeah, I don't know, but that might be on the original. The hamburger looks like it is, but I'm trying to figure out if that white is. The lettering is um, digital, but yeah, it's interesting. Freaking ass. Dude's a badass. <laughs> uh oh, here come the zombies. Meats. Dun dun. Scary. Ta -da! More scary. No, I don't know. Probably less scary. Moo eat. I'm like all paranoid. I'm going to shut this off again. I think what it is is I was. I. My keyboard is at a certain angle that my hand sits differently on the keyboard than when I would do my old videos. And so if I hit control the control button my finger wants to go to x but i really want to go to control w and in fact this is the this is the page that my video crashed last time or, or i shut photoshop with the flick of a switch man the lighting on this is great i've always been a sucker for ocean oceans um drawings and paintings for some reason i've always liked them it's kind of a generic paint painting thing, you know, like a like a ocean scene at night kind of vibe. Uh, they look cool. If they're done well, they're they're actually very very cool pieces. I really like this. Man, that's great. So Ashley Wood is one of the first people to really encourage me to do my own art. I mentioned this probably in every video that I do of Ash, but it meant a lot to me. But I was at Comic Con one year. And I saw him walking, and, and I, I I knew him a little bit. I'd met him a couple of times before at Wildstorm and stuff like that. And uh, I was asking him for some advice, and I showed him the stuff that I was working on. And um, he was really, really complimentary to my stuff. And, and um, it was it was very, very cool. And it, it gave me a lot of confidence um, hearing compliments from him because he's he's a very straight shooter. Uh, and if he didn't think you were doing something good, he more likely would tell you. <laughs> Which I respect. You know, it's tough to hear, but sometimes you need to hear. <laughs> so it's like it stings, but if you take it the right way, you can then go and improve the things that someone is critical of, you know. It helps. Man, it's cool. So I actually, you know what, I had looked at this. So I, I talked about this piece. This is actually the one that I shut the computer in and it turned off the Photoshop. Um, pouches. Uh, so pouches on f characters, on cylindrical objects like this robot and stuff like that. Depending on the, the angle of the body, I, I am always very, very conscious to look at how the pouches turn on the figure. He doesn't have a lot of turning going on, but because of the angle of the cylinder of this robot, we're slightly at a low eye level too um uh it all it all you know these are all just forms that are wrapping around a cylindrical form i'm doing this with a mouse but 
you know what I mean? You've got a cylindrical form, you've got these pouches that go around it and stuff like that. And I always, I will evaluate how well an artist understands form by things like that. Not not someone like Ash, but I'm saying like if I'm looking just at like random art online and they fuck up something like that, it's a tell to me. <laughs> like, all right, you don't really understand form because you're not having the pouches go around the body right. And is if you ever watch my Eric Canetti video, I like to know what's in the pouch. What did they put in the pouch? What do they think is in the pouch? I I never know with my own pouches, so I'm not getting on a pedestal with this. But I'm curious of when an artist draws pouches, what do they think the character has in them? I don't know why. <laughs> Ammo, beef jerky, cigarettes, dice, maybe dominoes. <laughs> Booty. He actually did some pretty, like, sexy paintings. Um, I don't know, maybe it was, like, eight years back? He was getting into some, like, fine art sort of stuff. He did um, some Metal Gear Solid comics that are pretty interesting. I always kind of like those. Some of these pages will go by a little bit quicker. There, some are kind of simple. Some of the sequential stuff. It's it's still nice, but yeah, he it it's interesting too. This there's a little bit of like a Kent Williams kind of thing. Kent Williams and um, I mean they they're. They're all kind of fine art illustrator type styles. Maybe John J. Muth. But yeah, uh, uh, even sometimes David Mack does a little bit of stuff like this. This is a cool page. Man, the lighting is great on this. It's so cool looking. Wow. He may thumbnail this stuff out. I, I don't know that for a fact, but I could see where something like this, you maybe could do it in like Sharpie, like pencil and then Sharpie and kind of ink it real fast and sort of like get like the composition and all that worked out and then just bang it out on a big board, either light box, sort of the big shapes and then go in and draw it real fast. But whatever he does, it seems to work for him. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Ash has got some very, very cool toys. I, I actually would love to collect some of his, like, statues and toys they're they're really really cool looking they're pretty expensive and the timing is always bad for me he did a skull with like a helmet oh i wanted to get that so bad but then space became an issue too because it was i don't know if it was like super huge but um man it was cool looking i, I would have loved to have gotten one but i'd have the money at the time but that was maybe a year and a half ago but it looked really neat it's kind of one of those things too though where you like you want it and then you get it in your house and you're like ah, it doesn't really fit like my room i i i respect collectors that sort of have um uh parameters of what they collect if it gets too hodgepodge it can work but there is something cool about someone who's got like a, a very focused collection I actually want to kind of re remodel my office a little bit so that it looks cooler for YouTube for when I live stream. Make it make it like a little bit more kind of neat. That's nice. That's crazy. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 
what a what a fun subject for a comic. Like it's like you want to draw zombies and robots fighting. He's like hell yeah. You know you almost although he has some pretty girls in here. You almost don't even need to be able to draw people well. Just draw good creepy stuff. But he's really good. So, he wouldn't have trouble doing whatever. This stuff is much uh, easier said than done in terms of style. Because I've... I've I'll, I'll go like where I'll be like, Oh man, I should do something like this. This would probably be easier and faster for me. Then you try it for a day and you're like, I suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> but again that's where the confidence things come comes in is you just have to stick to it and and realize that that who knows when he finishes these pieces they may look weird to him and he just stands behind it you know that's the thing you just don't know i think as fans we just assume that like that's what they intended those you know the everything is kind of going to like some master plan and from what I can tell with my own drawings, it's like nothing ever really ends up looking how I imagined it would. Most of the time, there's, you know, flaws that you you did, didn't get right and that bug you and, you know, some line on the forehead that's obnoxious or whatever it is. And you're like, ah, man, I've ruined it. <laughs> so, who knows? But... You just gotta have a good poker face. Put it out there and just stand behind it. Wow, that's cool. I really love that red color. Man, that rusty red, that's cool looking. Damn. Oh, this is an inspiring video for me. Man, that looks cool. And again, to stand behind this, take some cojones. <laughs> wow, that's some wild style stuff. And there's the creepy baby again. <gasps> creepy baby, creepy baby. All right, let's continue. Oh, yeah, let's talk about the ink line for a second. You can kind of see that pilot pen again, that nice thick line. Could, and again, it, it could be brush. I'm not saying for a fact, but but the pilot pen will get lines like that where you can get that nice chisel line and then also the thin line. And he really wields it quite well, so it's always cool to see. This is nice. It's cool. Creepy. So look, you all have a good day. I'm going to start to wrap this up because I need to get to work. I'm laying out like five new pieces and I, 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 I really take them one at a time. But what I mean is it's just I've, I have five pieces that I want to do. I'm not positive what order. Well, I mean, you know, look, I, I can give like a tiny bit of advice on that. So like I kind of know the characters that I'm, I think I'm going to draw next. But I'm again, I'm not sure what order I'm going to do them in. I have what I think is an order. But I'm having trouble coming up with an idea for one of the characters, to be honest. Like it's it's um I, I won't say who it is, but maybe later I'll I'll say who it was once I've done the piece. But I, I can't come up with an idea that I really like for her. And so al although I kind of know what I want to do, I still haven't nailed it. So I'm just going to move on to another piece and, and let that one sort of marinate and try to see if I can come up with something that I think would look cool, capture sort of the vibe of the character. I may go back and read a couple of old comics with the character in it and see if that triggers some idea. But, you know, there's always something to do. And and I, I really feel that way even on a piece. There's times when I'm working on like a piece. My pieces usually take me about 30 hours. I would say is the average for uh, most of my more finished pieces take me about 30 hours. So three days, maybe sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. I can sometimes do a piece in two days. Very rare that I, I can start and end something in one day. Um, anyway, but, um, you know, once I have something penciled and I'm starting to go in and do finishes, um, 
There's many times where I'm not 100% sure a certain area is going to work, but there's always something else I can do. This isn't a great example, but like on a page like this, like say you, you weren't really 100% sure what you want to do on the zombie's face. You've got a decent pencil drawing down, but you're just not sure. Well, you can always work on this for an hour or two and just kind of keep looking at this panel and thinking about it you know, would a, a little bit of background, you know, maybe help it, whatever it might be. And then, you know, maybe you finish this and you're still not sure. Well, then you, you know, you do this character. And, and um, I, I find that that most of the time there's about 30% of the piece that I'm not sure about. And sometimes, you know, it's the last 30%. That's a scary point to be where you you start to get to that point where everything that's left is stuff that you're not sure what to do on. But then you just, you take it in order. You go, well, this one I think maybe would work. And it usually will fall into place at the end. And then the other thing that I've, I've mentioned on my Patreon a little bit is I have like a, a little bit of a... The percent varies, but but... I figure if I can get a piece between 70 and like 80% of the way where I wanted it and there's 20% that I don't like, it, it probably will be okay. I used to always want everything perfect, but but now I, I go like, if, and it's, it's not a cop out. I always try to make it my best. If I could get through a piece and have everything go exactly the way that I want, I'd, I will 100% do it. I don't care how long it takes. What I'm saying though is like I'll I won't I won't stop working on a piece because one robot looks crooked to me and I've finished it. I don't like the one robot and it's really bugging me. And maybe like 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 say this is a 30-hour piece. And I've, I've done this area right here, and I can't stand this robot right here. I just hate the way that it looks. I'll suck it up, and I'll work for like another 10 or 12 hours, and I'll hope that as I get done with this area, that this bothers me less. It's a huge time commitment, and it's something that I've had to work through mentally myself, but that's basically how I do it is I just say, I hate the way that I drew the teeth. The one eye looks crooked. It's driving me nuts. I have to believe that that might fall into the 20% that I don't like, but if I can get that other 80% to where I want it, then it, 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 it'll be okay. <laughs> so I believe that helps some people because it's, it's something that it took me two decades to learn. And for those of you that don't know, Ashley Wood is Australian. Okay, let's see here. And he actually, he does great um, lettering. It's one thing that I've always liked about Ash's stuff. is not, not the lettering on the actual text balloons, but he actually has very cool fonts that he will like write and draw in his art. So look, you guys have a good day. I'm going to go. I, I do need to get to work. We'll leave it on this. This is nice. Um, so yeah, get out there, grab a pen, piece of paper, some paint brushes, whatever it is, and do some skadoodles and see what you can come up with. This is another, I'll, I'll like some closing advice talking about percentages. A every artist is going to have hundreds of uh, drawings that they do that they don't like. It's just the way that it goes, but you can't let that hang you up, especially in the beginning of your drawing career. Like, like it's not going to be perfect. So just look at it like this. Like if, if in a year, this is how I look at it now is I, I, my goal is to do between two and like 400 pieces a year, pages, whatever it is, so, somewhere in that range, 200 to 400. I figure if, if I can get like a hundred or 150 of them to look pretty cool, that's a good average, you know. I'm I'm batting 300, you know, kind of kind of vibe, and um, over a period of several years, now all of a sudden, like you've got hundreds of pieces that are pretty good, and you're doing less pieces that suck. So, just the 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 way to to do it is keep producing, you know, and your percentages will go up. Hopefully with experience and trial and error. So I right, talk to you guys later. Have a good one.